separating meat and milk is not a commandment. Genesis chapter 18 verse 8 is the proof. Why do Jews not eat meat with milk? When I read the Bible, Exodus chapter 23 verse 19, Exodus chapter 34 verse 26, Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 21, the commandment says did not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Period. End of story. So just like millions of other non-Jews, I can't understand how this one simple sentence turns into what observant Jews around the world willingly do without question by going to absurd and ridiculous extremes to fulfill this prohibition based on what the rabbis have interpreted this to mean. So this video will delve deeper into how this happened and what the true meaning is. I thought this would be cut and dry, but it's not. There are several theories as to what this actually means. So for those who don't want to listen to the whole video, I will give my opinions first, then go into debunking these theories. Okay, my final analysis is, whatever the actual reason, the prohibition is very specific. But the rabbis have turned this into a generalization and that is what has led to the complete insanity of Kashrut. Whether you think the Hebrew word jetty means only a baby goat or not, the sentence does not save us for the Hebrew word for meat. And that's where everything goes wrong. It clearly states one should not cook a kid in its mother's milk, but by virtue of not cooking, you would also not heat the kid boiled in milk. To extrapolate kid into meat in general is just wrong. The Smoking Gun Genesis Chapter 18 Verse 8 Abraham is met by three angels, and has Sarah and a young boy prepare food for them. Here is the excerpt. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. Did you notice that? Abraham, the father of the Jews, prepared meat, calf, with milk, to angels of the Lord. So if it's good enough for angels, why wouldn't it be good enough for us? How do the rabbis justify and explain this? Well, my Bible has commentary on this. This is what it says. Angels do not eat in the human sense, they only appear to do so. This teaches that one should not deviate from the local custom, Rashi. What? What local custom? It either means Abraham was following local custom of serving meat with milk, or it alludes to that Jews should keep following the local custom of not eating meat with milk. Either way, it makes no logical sense. Abraham knew these men were angels of God, he prepared the finest food for them. Calves were only prepared for very important people. Goats on the other hand were for more ordinary people or celebrations. Lambs were in the middle. Rashi is basically disrespecting Abraham by insinuating that he did something wrong. God didn't think so, it was after this that the angels tell him Sarah will have a son. God blessed and rewarded him. It all looks to me like the rabbis just want to cover their butt, as surely they can't ever be wrong. So what do I think it really means? It only starts to make sense if you are familiar with raising livestock, ancient nomadic customs, and yes a little pagan ideology. The first two instances of the prohibition listed along with the festival offerings of Passover and Shavuot. So the context must be related. Exodus 23 and 34, You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened and the sacrifice of the feast of Passover shall not be left lying until morning. The choice first fruits of your soil you shall bring to the house of Yahweh your God. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. It's related to the Passover offering because we are instructed to not boil the sacrifice in water. Here's where it gets interesting. It's related with Shavuot because what do you do with a boiled milk after cooking? You dump it on the ground. The same as today when you boil anything like pasta in water. Milk is actually good for the soil. People even use it today as fertilizer. So it would not surprise me that the other cultures would use this as an offering for good crops. Jews instead need to make offerings directly with God at the temple and not in their own yard in order to have a good crop. And there was an abundance of milk, especially at this time of year. Here in Israel, the birthing season for sheep and goats starts in late January through March. Goats nurse for about three to five weeks and lambs for about four to six weeks. But really are not totally wean until three to five months for goats and four to six months for sheep. Calves nurse longer usually a full six months. 
This falls right in line with these festivals. Other pagans would have had their own festivals about the same time. This is just yet another reminder to not imitate the practices of the pagan culture. It also seems highly probable that God wants to take out the female or feminine aspect out of offerings. This all smacks of fertility goddess worship. There are no dairy ingredients in any of the temple offerings. The reason that really nails it for me is that God says that newborns are to stay with their mother for seven days, but on the eighth, you can bring it as a sacrifice. Leviticus chapter 22 that's 27. Cooking and eating a newborn after eight days but while still nursing denies God of a sacrifice as evidence in the Samaritan Pentateuch, you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk, for doing this is like forgetting a sacrifice, and it is enragement to the God of Jacob. In the third instance, the prohibition is mentioned along with other food prohibitions. Deuteronomy 14, you shall not eat anything that has died a natural death give it to the stranger in your community to eat, or you may sell it to a foreigner. For you are a people consecrated to Yahweh your God. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. This is talking about separating yourself from the profane. This is where I think ancient nomadic culture comes in and not idol worship or sacrifice. All you have to do to understand this is learn from the modern Bedouin here in Israel. People didn't actually eat meat that often except for festivals and when guests arrived, hence the Abraham story. Modern Western cultures think the thought of cooking meat and milk together is disgusting. Why would someone do that? But it is well known that Middle Eastern cultures routinely did this. I don't know why the ancient rabbis didn't know this. The Bedouin were mainly goat herders. It is said that goats are the poor man's sheep. They are easier and cheaper to maintain. Their milk is also tastier than sheep milk. They also give more milk than sheep. So you might guess that in the desert, milk might be more plentiful than water if you had goats. Newborn goats don't have that much fat, so it would make sense then to cook it in milk to add flavor and fullness. That would make sense with any newborn animal, but not with fuller grown animals that had more fat. And since the thought of cooking a newborn in its mother's milk just instinctively doesn't sound right to us, much like the thought of eating roadkill, that died a natural death, although some people actually do, I think goes perfectly with the context of did not be profane. Do I really need to go into a long philosophical or mystical explanation of why you shouldn't eat roadkill? Most people don't need a reason, it's just gross. So how does this relate to today? It seems clear to me that unless the meat from a young goat, lamb, or calf is literally cooked in its mother's milk, it should be considered kosher. All modern-day slaughtering happens after the young has been fully weaned from its mother, from four months to a year, longer for cows. From Genesis chapter 18 verse 8 we see that meat and milk prepared separately can be eaten together. So since you would be combining them in your mouth and stomach, it would include physically combining them as in meat on pizza or cheese on a burger. So the only question the Keshert authorities have to ask is at what age was the animal slaughtered? Any animal not weaned from nursing should be excluded. This question only becomes more relevant when there is a temple and sacrifices are reinstated. The Rabbi's Reasoning Traditional commentaries totally ignore the different contexts and just stick to you may not cook meat with milk you may not eat meat with milk and you may not derive any benefit from meat and milk. Let's start with a rabbi's explanations. I think it starts with the word kid. If kid means a baby goat, then the prohibition only applies to not boil a baby goat in its mother's milk. So is it okay to boil a lamb or calf in its mother's milk? Why is it only bad for a goat? It just doesn't seem right. The rabbis say jetty is a general term for all young animals, even though every Hebrew Bible I know still translates the word jetty as kid and when most Jewish people talk about it, they always talk about baby goats. I can't say definitely either way, but it doesn't seem from Genesis 18 that Abraham used milk to cook the calf, and because it doesn't seem right in any case, I can agree with the rabbis at least on that point but from there they just keep expanding the definition. Of course it's talking about kosher animals, but only animals that give milk. When you change kid into meat, then that includes fowl like chicken, which of course does not give milk. There was never a consensus regarding this, 
so I don't know why rabbis would continue to stick to this definition. Why wasn't there a consensus? Shouldn't it be obvious? Why three times? This is where the rabbis just go completely off track. There is no significance with how many times it's stated. This is where they just start making things up because they don't know the real reason. Exodus 23 and 34 are virtually identical. Why put all the focus on one sentence when several sentences are repeated? The original meaning never changes, only the context. Instead, the rabbis change the meaning three times from not cooking meat and milk to also not eating meat and milk to also not deriving benefit from meat and milk. This is all just proof that when the rabbis say the oral law was given from Moses in a direct line to them, it's an outright lie. Why then all the debate? Will the rabbis ever change this meat, milk rule? It's hard to see how or why they would. All these Bible commentators know the rabbis changed the meaning, yet none speak out against it. It's ingrained into the psyche of every Jew that you are not a Jew unless you separate meat and milk. The whole kashrut industry would literally collapse. But do you know why the Messiah has not come? This is why. You do not deserve to be redeemed until you can see the error of your ways and repent of your arrogance and sin in leading people astray. In this case I mean the rabbis. Other Theories Maimonides wrote about this in his book Guide for the Perplexed. His explanation was that it may have to do with pagan ritual, but that he could not find any evidence for it. He also made the claim that meat and milk don't digest well together and it's too filling so it reinforces the notion that you should just not eat meat with milk period. Maimonides was a physician and scientist. He was not a shepherd or farmer. I emphasize that it's only with this knowledge that it makes sense. I already stated young animals have little fat. I could see how a steak soaked in milk might seem too much, but as a non-Jew before I converted, I can attest that my favorite food combination was a cheeseburger with a milkshake. Yes it was filling, but oh so satisfying. There is another 12th century Bible commentator Joseph Ben Isaac Baker Short that explains that the first two instances have been mistranslated. He says that it means that you shouldn't let a kid grow up in its mother's milk, meaning to take him right away to be sacrificed after the eighth day. So that kind of makes sense with how I described what it means but he makes it sound like kids or lambs or calves are done weaning after a week. Anyone who raises livestock knows that isn't true, have any of these rabbis ever stepped foot outside of a yeshiva? Which brings me to this whole notion of how it's about cruelty to animals. As an animal lover and a witness to livestock behavior, it seems just as cruel to take a baby away from its mother only after seven days. They are frantic over their young during the whole four to six weeks of nursing. But at the same time, I've seen when the babies die for whatever reason and the mothers seem to get over it after a few days. And all talk about milk meaning mercy and meat meaning judgment, or milk being the source of life and meat death is just nonsense. I attribute it to really Greek or Roman philosophical ideas during the Second Temple period of which I think the Pharisees were influenced. All it does is play into pagan reasoning as to why they would cook a kid in its mother's milk in the first place. In modern times there has been excitement over a discovery of a new Goritic text that does describe a ritual boiling of a kid in milk. But this was later debunked with further investigation, or was it? The line was damaged so it was reconstructed. But then after further study, they said it was not cook but slaughter. Then it wasn't kid but coriander slaughter coriander in milk. Sounds dubious to me. It kind of sounds like they are going out of their way to not confirm something in the Bible. But it turns out we don't need this source. Proof Sources What I don't understand is why no one talks about how it was common culturally and religiously to cook meat and milk or to pour out milk on the ground to help fertilize crops. Maimonides must not have been looking in the right places because another rabbi Isaac Caro in 1519 explicitly states what I mentioned about pagans pouring out milk to help their crops. This is backed up by Jewish Bible commentator Isaac Abarbanel in the 15th century who relates these same practices of his own time in Spain, it was among the practices of the idolaters at the time of their gatherings, namely to boil kids in milk at harvest time, their thinking that in this way they would ingratiate themselves to their gods, to this day. This is their foolish way. In the kingdoms of Spain, 
all the shepherds gather twice each year to take counsel and issue rulings with regard to shepherds and flocks, and they call that gathering mixing, mingling in their language. On that occasion, we have investigated this, their food would be meat and milk, and goat meat is considered by them to be the choicest for this meal. I also inquired and learned for a fact that in the island called England, where the number of flock animals is extraordinary, more than in other countries, this is their custom as well. Recent Theories These are worth mentioning. In my research, I came upon other articles explaining this. One was an Orthodox rabbi who claims that the third instance was given a new meaning by the Deuteronomist who is a different later writer than the person who wrote Exodus, so therefore this new meaning evolved and agrees with the current way we practice it. He goes to expound that since the Bible is a living book, explanations can evolve. But he gets into trouble when someone comments that isn't that the excuse reform Jews use? Yes the Bible is a living guide, but no the original meaning never changes, only the way it is applied throughout history and daily life. God and his law never changes. It was the same, is the same, and will always be the same. Another I just found totally absurd. This was from a writer blogger for the Jerusalem Post where he says it's all a metaphor and doesn't mean what it says at all. Huh? This is what he says, teachings about God are difficult to understand. Don't accept new spiritual teachings about God that look too good, and too easy, to be true, they have probably been deliberately cooked up to deceive you. Seriously? Come on now. You are just making a mockery out of the Torah. He seems to think everything in the Bible is a metaphor. How do you take any of this seriously? How does the J-Post allow such foolishness? Final Thoughts It's not that hard people. I had already thought that the interpretation was wrong. The rabbi's reasoning just doesn't make sense in light of these other sources. That's why I left Christianity. It doesn't make sense. The Torah makes sense. The rabbis do not. I had found another source relaying the pouring milk on the ground years ago. This time I delved even deeper and really wanted to understand if maybe the rabbis were right or not. It only took a few days of research online to find these sources. The truth is painful to hear and I think people just don't want to believe that they've gotten it wrong all this time. It's like when you find out the true origins of Christmas. It's time to wake up and realize what we have been doing is not pleasing to God. We don't have to worry about copying pagan practices as the rest of the world has become more civilized, for the most part. That's a good thing. That means the messianic age is getting closer. There will be a time when the whole world will copy us and we will all be equal. That's what is prophesied right? But we can't get there if Jews are stuck on wanting to be different when in doing so goes against God.